Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew, and on this episode, we're doing a toy review that's like almost a surprise to me. So I've been dying to get a great action figure of a samurai for the longest time, and they are so hard to find. And more so to find a samurai that looks cool. I don't just mean like someone with a ninja outfit kind of with a few samurai add-ons. I mean like a full-on samurai. They are few and far between, and especially in the 6-inch scale, they're even harder to find it feels like. Yeah, there are some really great ones that are 12 inches, but they are so much money. And rightfully so, because they have a lot of accessories, a lot of handmade clothing that has to be made. So to find one in a 6 inch figure scale, that was like nearly impossible. Until I found this one day while scouring across the Big Bad Toy Store website. This right here, folks, is our 112 Palm Hero Japan Samurai Series 2 Sonata Yukimura. Uh, I have no idea what to expect from this figure, quite honestly. This is my first time even seeing it right now in hand. I just got this thing in the mail very, very recently. I haven't even opened it yet. You guys can see, in fact, there's still like the tape here sealed. We're going to open this thing right here in a second. But yeah, I'm hoping that this figure is going to be the answer to my prayers. Because they're so hard to find anything like this out there. And when I saw the photos on Big Bad Toy Store, I was pretty impressed. So I decided to take a big risk here and give it a go. So I don't know anything about Palm Hero, which is the company that makes these toys. I have no idea about their quality. I know that these were not cheap because this was about $100 for this figure here. Uh, I know that they've got a lot of accessories. They've got fabric clothing. That's about where my knowledge ends. So to try and gauge my expectations right now, I don't even know if I have any. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be an awesome figure, and I feel like it will be. Um, but I'm also just like really excited to even have this thing in my hands for the very first time. So uh, let's talk about this packaging really quickly here before we do anything else. And uh, it's very simple, no frills packaging. And I was a little surprised by this, you know, and to be fair, I wasn't sure what to expect. So, you know, it is what it is, it's fine. The one thing I do notice though, is that it is kind of a small box. And I was worried about that when I got this, because I'm like, you know, this is meant to be a 112 scale figure. Is it gonna be a little smaller than that? So that's still to be determined, but I did measure the box and it's basically about seven inches. So I'm assuming that the figure is just gonna be like right here in this space. It's gonna be an exact six inches with really very little room for much else in here. I guess all the accessories will go here. I, I, don't, I don't quite know. Uh, it's gonna be a real mystery until I open it up. And you know, again, the nice thing about this packaging though is that while it is kind of minimal, it does give us a view of what we will potentially have on the inside. And you can see over here on one side, we have our character here, our Sonata without any armor. If we then turn the box to the other side, there he is fully armored up. Uh, and then on the back of the packaging, again, just to look at some of the accessories and some of his outfit detail that we're gonna have once this guy's out of the box. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this thing open right now because I wanna see how this is gonna work. I mean, it almost looks like this is gonna be magnetic packaging, which we've seen with some of the Mythic Legions figures, which I think is one of the coolest things. Like I love magnetic packaging. I would love if more toy lines did that. Huh. Okay, this is magnetic. So you guys can see right here, magnetic packaging. I love magnetic packaging. I'm hoping that this means we're gonna have some kind of maybe backdrop with the figure. Uh, yes, we do. We do have a kind of backdrop here. Cool. There we go. So we have a backdrop for our figure, a very low res backdrop for our figure, but nonetheless, a backdrop is a backdrop. I'll take it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Okay, so now we have just, again, another photo of the figure. They took really great photos. You have to admit, they did an excellent job with their photography here. Uh, they make this look very compelling. And I kind of want to do this live now reaction to you guys. So this foam piece over here, and here we go. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm actually digging what I'm seeing so far. Uh, and the more I look at it, the more I'm into it. So. I think that's my cue to now switch camera angles so you guys can get a better look at this thing also. So let's go ahead and do that right now and take a closer look at our Sonata Yuki Mora Palm Hero Samurai action figure. All right, so here is our Sonata Yuki Mora figure. I'm gonna do that opening now for this angle so you guys can see what I just saw. And again, here's that magnetic enclosure here and a better look at the backdrop, which yeah, very pixelated. Can we even call it a backdrop? I don't know, but it is what it is. But I always do appreciate when figures include the magnetic places to uh, hold the toys in there because there's a lot of folks out there these days who are not too into what's currently happening with more mainstream figures, which is the disappearance of plastic windows. So for me, having something like this is a really great alternative, and I wonder if more mainstream companies will start to do things like this. But anyway, here's our grand reveal. And you can see again, it's that really wonderful photography that they've done of this figure. So now the next step is doing what I just did earlier, which is taking it off. And uh, I, know I didn't notice this before, by the way, but this is just giving you a little bit of information on what to do with your figure. And especially with information about like how to swap heads, how to swap parts safely, 
I enjoy that that's in there because a lot of folks would probably not think about heating up joints and stuff like that. And when you're talking about a figure at this price point, you don't want things to break because if you did, whew, well, there goes a lot of money. So with that said, let's go ahead and remove this. And you can see what I saw moments ago and boom, there we go. So this is how our figure is looking in the packaging. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here so you guys can get a much better look at all the cool stuff that's here because there's a lot going on in this figure. So, okay, man, where do I begin here? So one thing I found that's really cool about this, which you guys can see, is these little pull tabs here. That is so smart. I'm going to actually leave this for the time being in there, but I just wanted to show you that that's part of this packaging. That's cool. I like that. Um, but let's just start taking these figures and these different pieces out here. So here's our figure, and he's in there fairly tight, but not too hard. He's not that unmanageable to get out of there. There he is. We're going to put him to the side right now. Uh, let's see underneath here. Oh, okay. We might be needing that a little bit later on. We'll see. We have his face mask. We'll look at all these things in detail in a little bit, but I'm just going to pull him out right now. Wow. So I'm, I'm super impressed, though. Uh, here's our sword stand. Looks like we have a case, which I will assume is probably going to be full of his weapons and accessories. Uh, this is pretty. Uh, and then over here, let's see. We have this guy down here. What are you? Looks like it's an altar. Oh, I think this is actually for his armor. Yeah, this is his armor stand. Now, let's see if there's anything actually underneath here or not. Uh, there is. Oh, okay. Down here is <laughs> even more stuff. Wow. So down here is where we're hiding uh, more parts of his armor, his different hands. Whew. All right. We're going to come back to this as we move along, I think. But let's just now take a closer look at our figure itself. So here's our Sonata, and it came wrapped with some plastic wrap on it. Uh, and that's just to protect it from staining. We'll just take these things off right now. Looks like this uh, is, let's see, can we just slide this off? I think like we can probably just slide this section off here maybe. There we go. It's a little adhesive, looks like. Uh, oh, actually, it's quite adhesive. So in that case, I would definitely not recommend just yanking it down. There's the pull tab, okay. I was looking for this pull tab right over here. That should be the uh, most efficient way to get them out of this. And we could always retape him later if we need to. And here's our character, and this is uh, our first look at him, really. And man, I am just like blown away by the detail here. So keep in mind, again, this is my very first figure from this company, from uh, from Palm Heroes. And uh, man, this is good stuff. You know, and I should add that I don't really collect a lot of Mezco 112 figures for a number of reasons, Main, mainly because you know they're they're quite expensive and they take forever to get shipped out. Just you know, it is what it is, but. Man, I can see why people love them so much, because this is gorgeous, and uh, get a better look at some of the armor pieces as well on him. God, oof. I mean, I want to have more words to say right now, but mostly all I can just get out there is a wowie wow wow, because, yeah, no. So this portrait is beautiful. It's, this is a great looking portrait of this character, great head sculpt, but the armor is so really where it's at, you know, so, man, let's get a good look at that. So let's just talk about this portrait a little bit more in depth, because this thing is really beautiful. I mean, I, I'm so blown away by the amount of detail on this face here. And this is such a clean, beautiful paint job. I mean, I got to like really look up close in here just and see all the different things. But I mean, he even has some pore detail painted onto him. Uh, man, the hair is really great, too. Mustache is painted very evenly, very nicely. I mean, I'm frankly just kind of speechless right now, because I'm trying to find like things to nitpick about, but really I'm just amazed by this this piece here. I'm just in awe at the amount of detail and just how good looking this thing is. Like, man, wow. <laughs> like, this is what you want in a head sculpt. This is just beautiful. Oh man, yeah. And again, let's turn around so you can see the hair a little bit better too. So you'll notice what's currently missing there, and that's his top knot. And that's what I believe was included in that baggie that you saw earlier. So there is his top knot. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in right now. And just so you guys can see also, it's actually two separate bags put together. Not just one bag, it's actually two baggies. One with the string, one with the top knot. And there you go, top knot is in. That was easy. Now our samurai is truly complete. And ugh, wow, no, just uh, this is figural perfection right here, you guys. Wow. All right, let's, let's pan the camera down a little bit. Let's take a look at what else we're working with here. So a big part of why I wanted this figure was the armor. And uh, whew. They did not skimp on this. Again, just highly detailed samurai armor. There's, oh man, 
gosh. Really, this feels like I'm just giving you a tour of the figure, because I don't really have much to say about it other than wowie wow wow, OMG, and all sorts of other different things. I mean, and even the shoulder pads there, the shoulder pauldrons, I guess they'd be considered pauldrons, but the uh, the shoulder padding, I guess we'll just call it there, even that has like little intricate fabric sewn into it. Man, you know, and this is another reason why I like this character too in particular, is because he's very colorful. I mean, I really like the red and the white here, and it goes great, of course, with the black too. Um, just really great juxtaposition of colors and contrasts here, and just excellent attention to detail. Scroll a little bit further down, you can see the boots as well, which from behind aren't that interesting, but if we turn them around, you'll see, there we go. Uh, now, for some reason, mine actually came this way, like, hit one of his feet there, you can see, it's kind of, there we go. The one downside I'm definitely having is getting him to stand up straight. That might just be because he's right out of the package, I haven't really done much with him yet. But yeah, right out of the box, unfortunately, this thing is really loose over here, so I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about that. But again, just great attention to detail, like <sighs> unbelievable. So here's how he looks now, just nice big scan from top to bottom. Wow, just <sighs> I'm in awe of this figure right now. That's really all I can say about it. Uh, although as I continue to look at it, there are some things that are kind of drawbacks, one being this string that's kind of hanging out on his arm right now. I don't know what's going on with that, but it's a problem. It's definitely a problem there. So you can see it's just kind of dangling. It's meant to be wrapped around because it's like that on his other hand, but for whatever reason, something didn't stay in place there. And I don't quite know how I'm going to be able to fix that. So I might end up just having to snip it off, which I don't want to do because I feel like that's a terrible idea. Uh, so if anybody has suggestions out there, if anybody's watching and is more familiar with this toy line than I am, let me know if you have any suggestions on how to fix this little dangly bit here because I don't like how that looks. Likewise, down here too with the boots, if anybody has any suggestions about what to do with this little section, please let me know. But really, other than that, I, I can't say enough amazing things about this. I mean, just, oh God, I, I, this is one of those episodes where I'm just like totally out of words. And I've never liked this. You normal viewers know, I usually don't shut the hell up about these toys, but in this case, I don't know what to say. I'm just like, wow. This is kind of perfect here. So I guess let's spend some time now talking about accessories because he has a lot of them as well. Now, if you check him out on Big Bad Toy Store, it basically lists all of his outfit as accessories. And you know what? That is fair because you can take all this stuff off, but I'm not going to because I'm looking at this right now and I'm seeing even how difficult this is with the red string here. Quite frankly, I don't feel too comfortable taking these things off yet since this is my first figure. I don't really know what I'm doing with it, um, but all the armor and stuff does come off. So that counts as an accessory. So that right there is just wow. I mean, you know, that's, that's kind of giving you your bang for your buck already. But uh, yeah, I do not have confidence in myself in being able to retie it as nicely as it was tied here straight from the factory, with the exception of whatever these little dangly bits are again. But yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna screw around with that. So I'm sorry if anybody wanted to see him without it in this review. Uh, I mean, you'll, you'll see it in the packaging, how it looks, but I don't know how to tackle that. So let's just move on here. And I guess let's just actually dress him up maybe a little bit further. So let's go ahead and start kitting him out here. And I think the first thing we're gonna do is start with his face mask over here. This is a traditional style of armor for samurais. Uh, wow, I, I, you know, I've never actually thought I'd ever have a toy that was like this. So I think that's probably why I'm extra holy crap today. But yeah, okay, so we're gonna put this face mask on first. We'll see how that works. But aside from the face mask, he also has this incredibly impressive looking helmet with horns and everything. A lot of color going on here, very bright, very vibrant but also just like this great kind of blood color. You know, it, it kind of reminds me almost of like, if you've seen Bram Stoker's Dracula, where we have that like crazy armor that Gary Oldman wears in the beginning of the film. This is kind of like that same color red, by the way. So I hope it kind of shows to you. Uh, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to wear this with the top knot. I don't think we are. Okay, well, shut me up. I guess we can. So that's how it's looking right there as is. Uh, I think the top knot probably if that was removed, would this helmet would fit a lot better. So we are gonna take the top knot off and pray I don't lose that. But yeah, let's take a look at this helmet with nothing else yet, without the face mask. Man, that looks really cool. <laughs> it's got a better view of everything here with the horn sticking out. Wow, that is so cool looking. Man, and somehow it's gonna get better because we're gonna add a face mask, you're kidding me? Wow, do a little quick rotation so you can see just all the detail here, every angle of this thing. I mean, the painting is just killer here. Look at this great amount of detail. Ah, man, I wish I had more things to say. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am because I'm so blown away, like, man. All right, so 
let's see if we can actually get this mask on him now, which I'm very curious how this is going to fit. I think we do have to actually untie it and then tie it back onto his face, but let's see if we can be lazy about this. I don't know how I'm going to be able to retie this thing because it's so small. <laughs> so I think this is going to be about as good as I can get it right now on my first try for this video. This was uh, definitely not a pleasant experience trying to tie this thing on there because, man, I definitely did not do a good job of it. But at least it's more or less there, and you can already see how just... <laughs> Man, it, it looks really cool, but you need to have very tiny fingers, and I've got small fingers. I don't even think that they're small enough to do this correctly. So there are also uh, strings on his helmet here. I'm just going to shove my fingers up in there, and maybe we can just hide that part, because I don't want to have to tie any more stuff here. So let's try this out. Nope, there we go. We've got to hide as much of that string as we can. Let's get this down there. Yo, okay. That's looking real nice now. Wow. Oh boy. You know, it makes me kind of sad that I couldn't get that mask on tighter because it would probably look infinitely better if I did. But even as is with the terrible, fairly loose way I put it on, this just looks so good already. Man, <laughs> like just, just get a good look at this whole thing. I mean, wow, what a treat this figure is. Man, all right, so that's him with the helmet on, but we still have a bunch of other accessories and that's including a lot of weapons. Let's take a look at those. But believe it or not, even after fighting with all of those strings and stuff, we still have a few more things to put on him. That would be this piece over here. This is his uh, vest, which you can see has the symbols in the back here. So we got to get this on him now. This is going to be a good way to kind of test the flexibility of this character because that is something I'm concerned about, especially with all the armor on this guy. So, well, let's see if we can do this. So first off, we're going to have to deal with another string, which I'm so looking forward to. Uh, there we go. Let's, let's hope this goes on a lot easier, or if not, we can always just, I guess, maybe tuck the strings in. But let's see what's going to happen here. Uh, let's see. So this is where the hard part's going to be now is, can we get this on him while he has his shoulder pads on? I do not think we can do that. Oh, the helmet's going to come off too now. I don't know how we're going to do that. All right, so after a whole lot of work, I was, in fact, able to get it on. And I thought I had recorded it, but I guess I didn't. So, whoops, sorry about that, you guys. I think I was very distracted by my fight with this outfit here, but yeah, so he is not the most flexible because he is wearing so many layers. He's very bundled up. And so what I had to do was basically bend his arms back as much as I could without snapping anything, which is not very much. So basically have him kind of like doing this a surfboard position almost as much as he can, which is really, that's about it. And then I just rotated his forearms as much as possible, which is also not a great deal. And I had to put it on basically both sides at one time, which is fairly challenging, uh, not recommended. And uh, you can see a little loose end over here again as well. But eventually, yes, this outfit, as you can see, did go on. So it was just a lot more work than I expected, but I guess that's to be expected also when you're dealing with a toy that's like this, which has so many fabric pieces and different elements to it. So there he is now with his complete fabric outfit. Do I dare try to get the mask back on him? I mean, I feel like I have to. Uh, well, let's see. I think, to be honest, I'm about ready to give up on this for the moment, just for the sake of this video and the sake of my time and yours. But let's at least put this helmet back on him, because at least that's there, and we know that fits on with no problems. So I will say he's looking still really good. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work to get this guy all dressed up and ready for war, but he is looking pretty magnificent. I mean, there's, there's no denying that. It's still pretty awesome. I mean, man, it's a really beautiful figure. And uh, I guess you really have to work hard for that beauty, though, to get it to that point, because this is definitely, you know, off camera, I can tell you, it's already taken at least like double or three times the length of what you're watching currently in the edited final version. So, all right, that's our Yuki Mora all dressed up, but he's not done yet. That said, we do have a few weapons, and I'm going to start with the biggest weapon, and this would be his Jumanji Yari. This is his cross-shaped metal spear, and you can see it's bigger than he is. Even with that helmet on, it's still bigger than he is. Uh, it's got a nice weight to it. I'm not sure if this is actually metal or not. It feels like it could be metal, actually, that they're using as the base for this. I don't think it is, but, uh, yeah, no, this is enormous. Very beautiful. Even, like, you can see over here on the weapon, it has, like, a design. Man, they really went the extra mile on this. Likewise, you can see the, the bit, I should say. Nice paint job. Really cool here. Uh, so that is his Jumanji Yari spear. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. In addition to the spear, he also has his Tanegashima gun. This is a flintlock pistol, I believe it would be. That would be uh, close to the time period that he's from. Again, just outstanding detail. It's such a cool thing to include. Cool looking gun. 
We'll spend some more time with this weapon though in a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's keep going here. And I think we should really get to the heart of the samurai right now, which would be his katana and his scabbard. And uh, while I was doing this, I actually did look it up in the scabbard that we're looking at. It actually is metal, believe it or not. So uh, that makes me believe even more that that spear actually probably was also made of metal. But yeah, here is our katana, beautiful looking design. You can see the symbols on the scabbard are also matching his outfit, the hilt, great paint detail. There's even detail right up there. I mean, man, that's insane. Um, so let's do proper unveiling. Oh, this katana I think is also metal. I will say off the bat, it looks like it's a little bit bent. <laughs> it does look like it's a little bent. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's a little bit bent here. Hopefully I can fix that. And you know, granted katanas are naturally meant to be curved, but this looks like this part is curving, uh, which is not meant to be how that should. So clearly something is wrong in there, but this sword, beautiful, wow. I think this is one of the reasons I wanted a samurai figure for so long is to get a sword that was in scale with like my six inch figures. Wow, beautiful. Now apparently the sword uh, should be able to actually fit somewhere on him. Uh, where? That's a good question. I have no idea. Oh. So somewhere in here, this scabbard is meant to fit in. Don't quite know how we do that, if it's meant to actually just go right through there, because I don't see any other compartment. It's a little weird. I'm going to figure that out maybe off camera, but uh, I think for now we'll just keep moving on and take a look at the other accessories that he has. All right, so one accessory that I should have been talking about and showed you guys sooner was this. Uh, this would have been handy to have during the entire video so far. This is a foot stand. I didn't even realize I included that. I had to just check on Big Bad Toy Store and I saw what that thing was. So this is just going to be your way to make sure your guy stays steady while he's... Yeah, there we go. Okay, it's probably not meant to be that way. I think it's meant to be from behind. Yeah, okay. Well, that would have made my life a whole lot easier if I'd used that sooner. But uh, that's cool that it's there. You know, this figure does not include a base, doesn't have a base, and it doesn't have any peg holes either because, you know, he's got sandals going on here. So, yeah, the only way to get him to stand up straight and keep him in that position would be this nifty little foot stand right there. So aside from that, we also have this over here, which we kind of peeked at earlier when we were looking at the uh, packaging. This is his armor stand. Now, like I said, I'm not taking the armor off, but if you were brave enough to dare and try, this is going to be the way to put everything on. And just for a little demonstration, boom, there you go. Helmet's on there. So it works. Hooray. But I ain't trying it out for you guys, but it does exist. Uh, so, wow. Although admittedly, it is actually really cool because I saw photos of it in action and it does look really beautiful if you get it to do that. It's just a lot of work that I don't have in me. All right, over here, next accessory, we have some kind of a case, some kind of a, I mean, it's not a foot locker, but that's what I'm just gonna call it for now, but it is definitely some kind of case to hold things. So let's see if I can actually open this thing up, give you guys a better look at what's inside it perhaps. I don't think this opens. So you can see here, it looks like it should open, but it's not. So I don't know what the deal is, but this feels like it's just one solid piece. It doesn't look like it opens, because if it did, I feel like it would have already opened for me, unless it's just that tight in there. But I don't think it is. So this, I imagine, would be the way to put your armor when it's not being used also, or maybe he's, you know, traveling out in the field and he's got to put his switch and stuff in there, you know, so he can play his games. Um, but yeah, we do have this. Uh, and then another very cool accessory is this over here. And this little tiny guy is your sword holder. So this is what you're going to do when you want to display your sword, let's say next to his armor stand, or just, you know, not want to have it in his hands. So just like that, there is your sword holder. That's really cool. I, I really like that one a lot. That's beautiful. And lest we forget one other very important and also plentiful accessory, we have an additional seven hands. So if you're wondering, by the way, he has a total of nine hands. That is a lot of hands to have here. And those hands are all meant to hold different things. We've got trigger finger hands. We have hands to hold the uh, sword, hold the spear. Like they're all doing different things here. Uh, in fact, I don't know if you guys should see there's a trigger hand right there. Uh, he's got a lot of cool hands. So and if you're wondering too, the plastic is a little pliable. So I feel like we're not gonna have too many issues getting the weapons in there. My big question is, can we actually swap the hands onto his arms to make him easily hold his weapons? Well, let's go ahead and find out right now. All right, so let's start maybe with the pistol hand and let's hope we don't break this toy while we're showing it off. <laughs> so that came off really easily. I'm hoping this goes on just as easily. Uh, I'm already seeing I'm gonna have some issues here with this fabric because that's just sliding right down. Let's hope for the best and I, I did not heat them up. So if I do break anything, it's my own damn fault. All right, so unfortunately, as I was doing this, you guys can see now this red string that was here on his wrist 
Uh, I think that's for his wrist. I don't even know. This came completely undone now. So, huh, well, that's annoying. I'm going to have to deal with that later on. But that, that hand went on actually really easy. Like, I would even compare it to Storm Collectibles with how easy that was able to be swapped out. And the same, likewise for the, uh, goodbye, likewise for the material of the wrists and the hands, all that stuff. It feels similar to Storm Collectibles. Uh, all right, so this is his trigger finger, I think. And there we go. That is him with his pistol. That's looking very nice. And yeah, that was not too difficult to swap out. So yeah, hats off to that. All right, you guys can see a better look too at the pistol now. Really just a wonderful detail that's on this thing. I mean, that's really just the keyword for this entire video's detail. But yeah, they did not skimp out here with that pistol. All right, we're gonna do a double swap right now. And we're gonna see if we can get the spear in his hands next. And I'm so afraid of just like how these things are coming apart now, the more I play with them. And I'm just not prepared mentally to handle, or even physically, to handle all these little strings that are hanging out everywhere. So I will say that's one pretty major drawback of this figure right away is so many little strings and uh, you're gonna be just in a world of hurt trying to deal with all of them. So, all right, I'm assuming these are the right hands for the spear. Spear is very heavy, by the way. Definitely is metal. And let's see if we can get it in here now. Everything's fitting, it's just a matter of the flexibility. And he's not inflexible, it's more just that he has so much fabric on him that it can make it a little difficult to get him to pose. But here we go. Let's get that thumb behind him maybe. That might help a little bit. Yeah, the fact that the hands are flexible means you have a little bit more wiggle room with this stuff here. But there we go. Okay. So we've got the spear in his hands now. Let's see if we can tilt the spear a little bit. In fact, you can see more of the detail that's there. That's so cool looking. You can see what I mean too now about the detail. It's even just right in that section of it. All right, so that's him with the spear. But now let's try the most important accessory of them all. Uh, and that would be the sword. Although I do want to say, you can always give a thumbs up too. Now the sword is going to be an interesting one. Uh, now I'm actually, I'm going to try it right now with the same hand he's wearing, uh, just because it is an open hand, so it probably can hold it, but it's definitely not the correct hand, but we'll just try it and just see how it works. Uh, no, definitely not the right hand. Okay, so we do have to swap that hand out right now. So another hand swap. You know, I will say for as much as I'm complaining about how difficult they can be to get them moving around, I mean, they're still coming on, they're still working. Um, it's just taking a little bit of effort and also a fairly gentle handle I do this, which is, mm, it is making it a little frustrating at the same time. Okay, and that was the correct hand, thankfully. So there we go, our sword is now in his hands. That's, that's so cool looking. All right, they got me. <laughs> now that the sword's in his hands, they got me, I'm super happy. Uh, can he hold it with two hands? N maybe. Not with all the armor on. I would probably say with this armor on, you're gonna have a really hard time getting him to hold the sword with both hands. I mean, I, I really wish I could show off the flexibility a little more here, but it's just very difficult with so much fabric that he has on him. Uh, and likewise too, I'm just like afraid to like, just even nudge some of the armor off and potentially break it. I don't think that's fragile at all, to be honest, but and I frankly just don't wanna deal with it again and again. Now I do wanna mention he does have that foot stand on his feet right now, uh, but it is not foolproof. He is still having some trouble standing. I'm trying to like triangulate his legs. You know, like it shouldn't be just cause he has this one weapon in his hand that he's having such a hard time holding stuff. Uh, so let's just see if we can get him to stand up. What a, what a pain that part of him is. All right, let's put our helmet back on Sonata. Hope he can stay standing while we do that. But there we go. Uh, I mean, phew, still looks really good. So that basically covers everything here with our Sonata Yuki Mora. And uh, he's a very, very impressive figure, albeit occasionally a frustrating figure. And I mean, you guys saw what I went through to get everything here on him. Phew, that it, It's a lot of work. It's definitely a lot of work. Is it worth it? I'd say yes. I think it is in fact worth it. Uh, it's just, you gotta really have a lot of patience when you're dealing with this figure. And sometimes patience is a virtue that we don't have here in the toy collecting world. But if you do stick with it, I mean, you've got a gorgeous figure for display. I mean, this is definitely not the kind of thing you wanna keep in packaging. He's not meant to be kept in package. He is truly meant to be enjoyed the way he is. All of his accessories in tow, and man, does he have a lot of them. Uh, Oof, man, it's a gorgeous figure, and it's really, I'd say, absolutely worth the price point here. Now, again, keep in mind, this figure was close to $100, uh, which is a lot of money. 
but you are getting a lot of stuff. I mean, unfortunately, you can't really see everything right now the way I have this set up here, but let's keep in mind here. I mean, if you really run down everything he has and you include all the different armor pieces because it is able to be removed and it does count as an accessory, he's got a lot. If you ignore the armor, though, if you ignore the armor and you count the armor stand, the pistol, the spear, the box over here, which does something, I'm sure, maybe, who knows, the scabbard, the sword, uh, the seven additional hands, nine hands total, and of course, don't forget the tiny little top knot hanging out over here. If you count all of that stuff, I mean, that's a lot of accessories for this type of figure. Plus, it's all fabric, it's all hand done. I mean, the craftsmanship on this figure is amazing. The artistry that went into it is just astounding. I mean, I was blown away throughout this entire video, as you know, and uh, rightfully so, because, man, you know, really the only thing that was a problem was how realistic it was. And what I mean by that is the fact that there were so many stupid tiny strings to deal with, and that at some point, yes, I will have to deal with all these strings if I want to take stuff off or if I want to reattach things. For example, like what's going on with this wrist over here. It's going to be a lot of effort to deal with all that stuff, but it is what it is, and that's kind of what you're getting when you get a figure that's in this kind of style. But man, this really is the figure I was dreaming of. To be honest though, I would have been happy, maybe in some ways a little bit uh, less, you know, like I wouldn't actually mind having a little bit less the armor. Like, yes, I love the armor and I want more samurais like this, but I do want to say, you know, as I look at this guy, it makes me really yearn so much more for a 112 scale Lone Wolf and Cub figure. Can you imagine that? Like, that's what I want to see next. Like if this company can maybe do that or other companies out there that have the capabilities to do it, I want a Lone Wolf and Cub. I want Seven Samurai, you know, the Akira Kurosawa film. I would love a Yojimbo uh, with, you know, Toshiro Maifune. There's so many licensed characters I would love to have. Or maybe, you know, they could find other companies who are willing to do unlicensed versions. I'll leave it at that. But this is the kind of stuff I'd love to see in this scale. Because when you consider the scale and what you're getting and the detail and the precision that it takes to make this, it's an absolute bargain. So I stand by that this is an excellent price for what you're getting. And it's a great figure. But you do need to have a lot of patience and also very tiny fingers to deal with all these stupid strings that I've left here dangling. You know, for me, this is a big learning curve for what I'm used to getting because, you know, I, I can do a comparison right now. See, so take some of these pieces off here. You know, I'm used to getting things like this Bret Hart from Mattel. You know, I'm used to figures like Outback from G.I. Joe Classified. And there's your uh, height comparison as well. He fits in just fine. I was very worried about his height, as you know. Uh, I would say that he might be a little bit smaller but not that much. Keep in mind the height of the wrestlers, they're always a little bit bigger. You know, he, he's still fairly accurate, I'd say, in, in what his size would be. So, uh, yeah, no complaints there, but that's your comparison. But, you know, I'm used to getting toys like that, which are in the $25 range. This is a big jump ahead of me. I don't really buy Mezco 112s either. So, for me, it's quite a jump in the style of toys, but I like this style of toy, and I'm willing to fight with it and spend more time learning all the ins and outs of this line and, and figures like it. But as far as the first figure goes, uh, it is a steep learning curve. So, you know, buyer, beware. You're going to have a lot of work ahead of you <laughs> when you do get this guy. But, oh man, no. This is, this is gorgeous. I'm pretty sure I'll be buying a lot more as this line continues. I'm just going to line up the hands now. So really, if I did have one complaint, it's just the fact that you're going to have to do a lot of work to get this guy to look good. But once you figure it out, you can basically leave him there for forever. Uh, although I would say this is the kind of figure you want to put on a shelf in a glass case and don't just have him hanging out because he will collect dust and you will ruin that $100 figure instantly in a matter of months. It'll be worthless. It'll be covered in dust that you cannot fight with. But with all that said, if you're prepared for basically the responsibility of having this type of figure, then you will not be disappointed. And especially if you're somebody like me who loves Samurais and Feudal Japan and this look, this is what I'm waiting for. I'm so happy I have this. And that's why I will work on learning how to untie all this stuff and deal with it for future toys because I want more of them. So that's our look at the 112 Palm Hero Japan Samurai Series 2 Sonata Yuki Mora figure. I got this guy off a of Big Bad Toy Store. I don't have any affiliate links for him. So if you want to pick him up, I will have a link for Big Bad Toy Store there. And you can use that to pick him up. I've had a lot of great things to say about this figure and I'm definitely going to be enjoying him for many, many years to come. And hopefully you'll see more of this series and a bigger collection of samurai toys from me on this channel. So stick around here on Nerd News today for this and everything else I'm doing here on the channel. And until next time, sayonara.